Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're gonna take a look at another problem on calculating a derivative where we combine the quotient rule and the chain rule. As it turns out, this is a really good problem because we're gonna find there's a lot of work to simplify it. So let's get right to it. So first, you can probably obviously see that we have a quotient, so we're gonna apply the quotient rule, but when we differentiate the denominator, that's where we have a composite, so we'll apply the chain rule. So let's start by identifying our pieces here for our function thought of as a quotient. So f of x, the numerator, will be just x. And the denominator, g of x, that'll be the square root of x squared plus 1. All right, we're going to calculate our individual derivatives here, f prime. The derivative of x, that just comes out to 1. And to calculate g prime, we're going to make use of a special case for the chain rule, the general power rule, which we've already used in several problems. I'm going to rewrite this as x squared plus 1 to the power 1 half. And now we can differentiate that with the general power rule by bringing the exponent down. So to calculate g prime, we'll start by bringing the power 1 half down. We keep the inside the same. Subtract 1 from that power and just be careful. We have 1 half minus 1. That simplifies to negative 1 half. But because we're applying the chain rule, we're using the version here, the special case called the general power rule. We multiply by the derivative of the inside and the derivative of our inside, x squared plus 1, that comes out to 2x. All right, now to make the rest of the work, combining the pieces back together according to the quotient rule, we're going to try to simplify all these pieces as much as possible. First notice, we have a half times 2. Those factors cancel. And I'm going to rewrite this x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 half power. I'm going to put that as a factor in the denominator. There's several ways that you can proceed with simplifying the derivative here from applying the quotient rule. I like to rewrite my negative powers as fractions. This will get students in calculus very comfortable simplifying complex fractions, expressions where you have fractions inside fractions. So let's rewrite this derivative for g prime. We have x to a positive power, but we're going to put x squared plus 1 in the denominator since the power is negative. And since it's a 1 half power, I'm going to rewrite that as a square root. So g prime comes out to x divided by the square root of x squared plus 1. All right, kind of interesting that that derivative is the same as our function, but that's just a pure coincidence. All right, now we have all of our pieces, f and g, f prime and g prime. We're going to combine everything according to the quotient rule. So we're going to take our time with that. First part is we have f prime times g, and I'll be using g expressed in terms of a square root. So f prime, 1 times the square root. And then we subtract now f, which is x, and that's going to multiply g prime, where we're rewriting that. Instead of this mess with factors and negative powers, we're going to rewrite g prime as this fraction. And that is x divided by the square root of x squared plus 1. All right, and don't forget with the quotient rule, we have g of x squared. I'm going to write that out. We have the square root of x squared plus 1 squared. You're probably comfortable squaring the square root here and just writing that denominator as x squared plus 1, but I try, like in class, to not to do too much all at once. All right, now here the difficulty is in simplifying this because what we have here is a fraction within a fraction. And it doesn't matter if you write your derivative here 
as a fraction or leave it with negative exponents, you're still going to try to simplify that mess of a numerator. Now, the reason why I like using fractions within fractions here is there's a very nice, clean way to simplify this. We're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by the LCD. And here, that's just the square root of x squared plus 1. So we're going to multiply the numerator by the square root of x squared plus 1. And we're going to multiply the denominator by the square root of x squared plus 1. Notice what we're doing here. We're multiplying by 1, a quantity divided by itself. Now the benefit of doing this is when we take that square root of x squared plus 1 in the numerator, we're going to distribute it here into our numerator. That square root times itself, that cancels out. But more importantly, when we distribute that to this term, that factor of square root of x squared plus 1, that's going to cancel out. So if we go ahead and distribute, take that factor, multiply it here. A square root times itself cancels out. We're left with x squared plus 1. Notice here we're going to have a factor of minus x. This square root is going to multiply in and cancel that out, and we're left with another factor of x. So here, distributing that, we're just left with minus x squared. And our denominator, I'm going to write this as x squared plus 1. And that's now going to multiply this denominator, the square root, of x squared plus 1. And notice how quickly that simplifies. And again, if you write this as a fraction in the numerator there, giving you a complex fraction, this trick of multiplying the numerator and denominator by the LCD gets you to a simplified result where there's no fractions within fractions very quickly. And here, notice you can cancel out the x squareds. And what we're left with is in the numerator, we're left with 1. And we have in the denominator, x squared plus 1 times the square root of x squared plus 1. And you can even simplify this further if we recognize we can think of the square root here as a 1 half power. So this denominator is x squared plus 1 to the first power and that's being multiplied by x squared plus 1 to the 1 half power. Since we're multiplying the same bases, we can add the exponents. And 1 plus 1 half, that comes out to 3 halves. So our final simplified answer for the derivative, we can write the numerator as 1. And our denominator, we can write that as x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves power. And there we go. Now this is again a really good problem. I always include this problem or something very similar to it in my calculus course and usually on the first few exams. And the reason for that, it's a good problem involving the quotient rule and the chain rule. But more importantly, the work here, this is standard algebraic simplifications for what you'll be seeing in your calculus course in a few sections once you get through all your derivative rules. Hope you enjoyed this problem. I hope you learned a lot from it. If you did, support the channel, like and subscribe.